Be safe before you're sorry. Hello and thanks again for tuning in to another When It Comes Down To It. This time we're talking about basic safety for water mitigation. We're not talking heavy sewer cleanup, we're not talking mold, just the basic water. As we said in our opening line, you have to be safe before you're sorry. Because it could be a permanent thing if you're sorry, if an accident was severe enough that people had gotten permanently harmed from that situation. And we never want to ever have that on a job site and especially on our conscience for the rest of our lives. And of course, the person who winds up having the problems resulting from that accident are always going to be compromised for the rest of their lives. So focus on safety when you're out on the job sites. It's pretty straightforward. We can focus on three basic areas to get you to fundamentals. The first thing you're going to remember is anytime you're using any type of chemical cleaning agents, whether they're biocides or cleaners, whether they're registered or not, first thing is that particular chemical agent needs to be safe and effective. Now out there, there's a lot of things that are effective, but they aren't as safe um, as we'd have liked them to be. So we got different cleaners now. Um, some aren't as effective, but if they're much safer, that's going to be what? Much better for us in the long run. Okay. So sometimes you may need to sacrifice a little production for health and safety, but everybody goes home safe. And that's the point. Once you find something that's safe and effective out there and it works good for you, make Double check to make absolutely sure it's governmentally regulated and approved for the use that you're using it on. Because in the United States, FIFRA and Canada WIMS, they'll tell you that if you use a chemical that is not authorized for the use you're using it for, you can be liable for that. So it's a big one we want to make absolutely sure of. So government registered and of course approved for the task we're performing. Last but not least on the chemical agents, careful with green stuff. You know, everybody talks about, well, this is plant-based, so it's 100% safe. Folks, there are people out there allergic to peanut butter. There's people out there allergic to wheat. There's people out there allergic to dairy products. How ubiquitous are them? They've been with us for thousands, tens of thousands of years in some cases. And we still have people who have what? Allergic reactions to those products. And I always love that. Yeah, but it's all natural. Well, arsenic is all natural. Last time I checked, sodium cyanide was all natural as well. These are not chemicals that you want to have because they're designed to kill. Um, they're all natural. So just because it's green, don't assume that it's not going to affect anybody. I will say, though, if you can use a green, especially a plant-based biocide, we got a couple of those coming out, been out for a long time. They're awesome products. It makes the customer feel better. There's no problem with using those, but again, always make sure your paperwork is signed because one of the biggest issues is you have no idea how their customer, their children, their friends, their family could react to anything you're putting in at home. So make absolutely sure you're covered there legally. Number two, in our construction and demolition world, um, we have an OSHA 10-hour course that basically covers that in the United States, and there's the same type of courses all around the globe. We want to make absolutely sure that our people are trained so that they do not cause any damage to themselves or anybody else working out there in the business. And that's what that 10 hours is all about. You don't have to take it all at once. You can take a half hour at a time, 20 times. 10 one hour sessions over a month or so, but folks get trained on that before you get into demolition, making sure you're using power saws right, and most importantly, you're wearing the proper PPE, okay? PPE is a big one out there, and that's gonna get it to you. Now, horseplay. Horseplay is just absolutely insane. Horseplay cannot be tolerated on the site at all. If you're getting in the new hire and they want to goof off and throw hammers around or start dropping things out the second story window to see them splat on the ground on the first story or anything like that, that person needs to be brought back to the office and talked to by HR and decisions made at that point in time. Horseplay on the job site is the number one cause of accidents out there. 
and it's the number one cause of serious injury and death. It's stupid things like people having forklift races in a plant. And I have actually done water losses because of people doing forklift races in a plant. So make absolutely sure there's no horseplay, no horseplay tolerated anywhere in the construction or demolition business. It is simply not a business to be a smart ass in. That's time for outside the business to have a good time, okay? Now, one other thing we wanna get into, as we said, is the proper PPE. And one of these things I gotta laugh about is HGTV. Um, quite actually, you do not demo nor construct HGTV style. Um, before you swing a sledgehammer at that wall, is there electrical in there? Is there live plumbing in there? Um, you know. That could be some really bad results. Um, what happens if it's full of asbestos, insulation, or something like that, or lead paint, okay? So don't do it HGTV style, do it properly. Third, last but not least, is water specific issues in a water loss. Mentioned before, the categories of water from IIC or C standards, we want to look into the categories of water because different categories means different contaminant levels and of course they have to be cleaned up differently and the materials they have affected may or may not be able to be restored after this different contact with the water. And of course, category one is fairly clean water. Once it hits the floor, it's picked up all of the dirt in the house or the building or whatever else. It's probably not all of that bad. But if you're in category two or three and you don't have proper footwear, it could cost you some issues. And I've had some friends had some real problems with foot issues by getting infections in those types of water losses without proper footwear. So again, it goes back to the PPE, um, always in that categories of water, you're gonna select your PPE out of it. Another one is electrical. <clears throat> I'm not gonna go through all of them. They're all in the OSHA 10, but the main one about electrical is this, folks. You are 10 times more likely to die from an electrical mistake than any other accident on the job site. So make sure that only skilled and trained people are handling your electrical. Connection of your dehumidifiers, connection of your demolition tools, whatever it happens to be, make absolutely sure you don't have any electrical issues. That includes tripping over the wires. Because believe it or not, that's the next one. Slips, trips, and falls account for 15% of all deaths on construction sites in the United States of America. That's an alarming number. That's just simply slip, tripping, and falling. Now, you're always gonna have wet, slippery floors. Your extraction tubes, trip hazards. Power cords, trip hazards. Drain lines on your dehumidifiers, trip hazards. So make sure you keep those aisles, passageways, and especially your walking and working surfaces clear. Again, 15% of the deaths can be avoided by what? Just prevention. Think about that. Last but not least, contaminants. So if you are in a sewer loss or you discover mold or anything else in this house or this building that's out of your realm of capability and especially out of your realm of the PPE you're wearing, stop work, go to the supervisor or the project manager, discuss options and proceed safely. So if you get any undiscovered contaminants, and this could be you're cutting open a wall and all of a sudden there's this white fuzzy stuff falling off a pipe. Might be time to talk to somebody. Is it asbestos? I don't know, unless what? We test it. Smart thing to do, be safe, okay? Always be safe. That's the bottom line. When it comes down to it, remember, job site safety has to do with three major things. Handle and use your chemical agents properly and make sure they're properly registered. On your construction and demolition side, get properly trained with an OSHA 10 hour or something along those lines to make sure, and absolutely no horseplay there. And thirdly, when it's water specific, look at your IIC or C categories and seriously consider focusing specially on electrical, slip and fall, and contaminant issues on water loss projects. Here's wishing you safe drying. Thank you for learning with rtilearning.com, and as always, Thanks for seeing our magazine for distribution of the series. You're rolling. All right, this is back safety for water mitigation. Basic safety. I'm sorry, basic safety for gotta water keep, mitigation. Gotta keep your back safe. Back safe is a good, important part. I don't even have that on it. I probably should have that on it. Yeah.
Now, quite actually in the world of safety, but quite actually, nah. So the whole concept is once you find something that's safe and effective, you want to make sure, obviously, it's government. Nah. All right. I think I'm getting better at this. <laughs> You're like doing awesome.